I have whinged quite a bit in the past about the crimes against science committed by Hollywood, and I was all ready to do it for The Martian. The thing is about this film is that its heart is so thoroughly in the right place that I just don't want to. I'm Stevie from WhatCulture.com, and this is eight ways that The Martian shows Hollywood how to do science right. At number eight, it shows good scientific method. One of the things that really cheeses me off about science in movies is that it's all too often conflated with straight up fairy magic by Hollywood bigwigs. Even films that claim to be heavy on scientific accuracy will contain a sequence in which there is a big problem, so they call a scientist who does a science thing, and everything is magically better in time for credits to roll. One of the best things about The Martian is that almost the entire plot centers around having to figure stuff out. It doesn't portray science as some kind of dark art that only men in lab coats can do. Instead, we get a close up look at the scientific mind at work. Number seven, it isn't overdramatic. Often a film of this kind will pull exactly zero punches when it comes to making you feel as though you're on a roller coaster ride made of motorbikes and the American flag. I suspect that a lot of this is rooted in the stereotype that science is hard and there's an underlying paranoia that the audience will simply switch off unless you reward their attention with bangs and flashes. I think this absence of hyperactivity is probably one of the key reasons why The Martian feels like a science movie for grown-ups. Yes, the last half an hour or so is nail-biting edge of your seat stuff, but without being gratuitous. Number six, it isn't too serious. Because science is a serious subject, it's often given this quasi-religious status in many Hollywood films. The implication is that we should all be very serious about this stuff because we're all very clever and profound. The refreshing irreverence shown throughout the film does far more to demystify science. What with the Guardians of the Galaxy Mars Edition style soundtrack and Watney's steady stream of quips and swear words in between doing some very, very clever science, it becomes accessible in a way that we haven't quite seen before. I think the way that science is represented in The Martian could prove to be far more compelling for the young and wide-eyed amongst us than any of the over-the-top peril of a lot of sci-fi. Number five, no hero moments. One of the things I really wasn't expecting from The Martian is its relative lack of epic set pieces. The visuals are epic, the concept is epic, the movie as a whole is epic, but there's a serious lack of Hey look, all of the heroes are walking into battle in slow motion. In fact, this is by far one of the most understated epic movie blockbusters I've ever seen. Watney isn't a hero, he's a scientist. And despite what you've learned about Archimedes in primary school, in science there's rarely one eureka moment. Our hero is too busy figuring out how to survive to make some kind of dramatic speech whilst gazing ponderously over the landscape. Number four, what they got wrong. I've been lauding the scientific accuracy of The Martian, but this is sci-fi, and there are a couple of instances where it doesn't quite match up to the real world science. The most talked about, of course, being that dust storm that kicks the whole thing off. The Martian atmosphere is only about 1% the density of the Earth, so a tornado strength storm on the surface of Mars would feel no more than a bracing breeze. Although those dust devils dotted about the landscape are real. Another inaccuracy being brought up is the effect of the radiation that Watney would have been bombarded with on the surface of Mars. As far as I can tell, this wasn't so much an inaccuracy as an omission, and to be fair, it is quite difficult to convey DNA damage on the big screen, even if you do have an Academy Award. The lower gravity on Mars would have turned Watney's movement into a sort of comical half skip, something that they missed out from the movie. Number three, the stuff they got right. All this said, this is a science fiction movie with its feet firmly planted in the world of science fact. Growing a crop of potatoes on Mars may be easier than we once thought. Martian soil already contains nitrogen and the additional nutrients from the fertilizer would have fortified it with pretty much everything they would need. The system Watney builds to extract water from rocket fuel probably would work, although perhaps not quite as effectively as in the film, but Martian soil actually has a lot of water ice already locked up in it, so all you would have to do is thaw it out. The gravity assist was another good one. This was a well-established principle that was used by the first Apollo crews should their engines fail. If we ignore the slightly dubious fact that the NASA administrator doesn't know what a gravity assist is, then this is one of those moments where the real science is more exciting than the science fiction. Oh, and that oxy-liquid bomb would have worked. Number two. Timing is everything. They probably didn't plan it, but the film's release couldn't have come at a better time. It was a hell of a PR week for Mars. Coinciding perfectly with NASA's announcement that they had discovered running water on Mars, the combined impact of the two is probably more than the sum of its parts. In an age of austerity, space exploration has become regarded as a luxury that we really can't afford, even if the rekindling of our excitement about science is only in the mind for the moment. Keeping it alive until we have the resources is probably doing more good than we could know. Number one, it's hopeful, you'd think, that a man trapped alone on an inhospitable planet would be a bit of a downer. But actually, in its realism, this film offers us a little bit of escapism that lets us have a bit of faith in science again. Often in the movies, science is the destructor, the destroyer of worlds, and only love, humanity, and a peppy bit of spirit can overcome its cold, calculating evil plans. The whole they were so preoccupied whether they could that they didn't stop to think if they should perception of this amoral for the greater good scientist is mercifully absent from The Martian. 
framing science not as the enemy, but as the ally and even the hero. So what did you think of The Martian? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like, share and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter here. I'm Stevie from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.